Mr. President, my, my colleagues are well aware that in November of 2020, the Senate Oversight Committee began a series of hearings related to the integrity of that fall's election in Michigan. The committee met with citizens who had firsthand accounts, experts, election officials, and many others. After months of meetings and innumerable hours of testimony and investigation, the committee adopted a report that cited numerous problems and made many recommendations for needed reforms to our system. The report was also able to conclude that many proffered theories of inaccurate or fraudulent election results were false. But what many here might, may not know is that I, as the chair of the committee, was subpoenaed by the U.S. House Select Committee on January 6th, this past December. Saying that I was surprised is an understatement. Nothing in the Senate committee report was related to the events of 6 January 2021 at the U.S. Capitol. Despite this fact, I did agree to answer their preliminary questions to prove that I didn't have any relevant information. However, this wasn't good enough for them. And not long ago, the committee demanded that I come before them in a public formal hearing in Washington, D.C., under oath regarding the investigation and the report of the Michigan Senate Oversight Committee. However, I simply could not acquiesce to such a request. To do so would have violated my rights as a member of this body, as well as my oath of office. Mr. President, not only do the constitutions of the United States and of Michigan protect each of us from being compelled to answer questions by other government bodies regarding the work of our chamber, but Michigan is a sovereign state whose legislature cannot simply be called to heel by the U.S. Congress. I believe it is a flagrant commandeering of our legislature and violative of federalism. Every member of this body should take offense to the notion that we should be expected to present our work to the federal government. My unwillingness to appear before the Congressional Committee was not due to any partisan or personal interests. Rather, I'm speaking today to strengthen the resolve of any legislator in the future to make clear that it is simply contrary and anathema to our sovereignty and to federalism that any member of any state legislature be forced to testify under oath in front of a congressional inquest regarding the work of that state's House or Senate. Whether that inquiry is friendly or not is irrelevant. Should another Congress in the future who disagrees with the work of the Michigan Senate call me to testify before them, the answer will still be the same. I don't work for you. I work for and I only answer to the Michigan Senate and the people of the sovereign state of Michigan. This position is essential to the ability of our state's legislature and the legislatures of all 49 other states to conduct investigations, a fundamental part of the legislative process. There are two main reasons foundational to understanding this important argument to consider. The first is that one member does not have the authority to speak for all the members. The Senate Oversight Committee is not solely is, a, is an arm of this body, not the chair. It speaks by majority votes, not through one member, the chairman or otherwise. The second reason is the obvious chilling impact such summons would have had on the legislative, would have on legislative investigations. What state legislator will undertake to inform itself and its citizens of the realities of our own government operations if its work product is subject to the review, friendly or hostile, by the full power of the U.S. Congress. Suddenly, every law we pass, every dollar of ours we spend, every effort to investigate on behalf of our citizens would be called into question. Every member could be subjected to fines and imprisonment if they're unwilling to testify under oath or if that committee were to find their testimony itself in contempt. Thankfully, after I stated my refusal and reasons, the committee ultimately rescinded their demand that I testify. Instead, they adopted my report without my foreknowledge or not by my request. I'm glad to have their endorsement of the many findings and recommendations of that reform. But we stand strong 